Behind me stands Barford St. Martin's 200-year-old bishop and son, pipe organ. I haven't tried it out at all yet, but judging by the quality of the pipe work, I've got a good feeling. This village, Barford St. Martin, gets its name from the shortening of Barley Ford and from the patron saint of this church, St. Martin. The whole church is built on an artificially raised platform of earth, kept in place by a stone wall that in some places is seven feet high, presumably because when the church was built, this area was water meadow, as it still is nearby. This is the most exciting part of this church for me, viewers. This chancel was built around 1216, making it even older than Salisbury Cathedral. I've lived in Salisbury all my life. The spire that rises up delicately into the clouds from here seems as ancient as the landscape itself. It's unthinkable that I could be stood inside a space that's older. Look at this Tudor tomb on the south wall. It appears to show a woman reclining on a sheet with a barely readable inscription. O mortal man, foresee thy fatal fall. How, when, or where, thou knowest nothing at all. No sooner passed the woeful mother's womb, but subject straight into the desert tomb. From earth I came, and so to dust to yield. All flesh must fade, as doth the flowers in field. Now then, to return to the west end of the church, to see one of the most beautifully kept village instruments I have ever visited. I have not touched a single key on this organ, but already I love it. Wonder why? Well, there's one simple reason. Most church organs are hidden away in an aisle of the church. You never see the organist. Here, the story is different. The congregation walks in through the main door. Not only can they hear the wrong notes, they can see them as well. Let's get down to business then. This organ has two manuals and a pedal board. These are the stops but they're not normal stops that you pull. These are little tabs, almost like on a Hammond organ or something. You just press them down to get the sound. And already you can hear the quality of this machine. Let's make our way through these stops, starting with the trusty open diapason. The best comparison I can give is to a warm, rich cello sound. And then we have a four-foot principle, which makes this organ great for accompanying hymns. Looking up to the swell, we have an array of stops that make this organ sound really delicate playing Baroque music.
From last week's video at Bishopstone, you'll remember the balanced swell pedal that that organ had, that allowed you to gradually control the volume of the swell. This organ has a slightly different design. It's called a ratchet swell, much more impractical, less flexible. It can only be in two positions, open or closed. It's hard to get a gradual shift in volume because you have to keep your foot on the pedal at all times and slide up or down gradually like the clutch on a car. That's why this organ is better for Baroque music where there aren't so many crescendos and diminuendos. One stop I've tried to avoid showing you viewers is the tremulant, which on all accounts seems fairly useless. Normally a tremulant only undulates one part of the organ so that you can get a solo like a solo oboe or something with a slight vibrato to it so it sounds more lifelike. Here the tremulant affects the entire organ so unless you're into fairground music it isn't much use. See what I mean? I must say though Without a shadow of a doubt, this is one of the finest village church organs I've ever had the pleasure to play. I bet if you asked it nicely, it would even play Vidor for you. The organ here at Barford is hugely versatile for such a small instrument. Its greatest hindrance, perhaps, is the echo in this church, or lack of. Even some of the grandest buildings, Christchurch Cathedral in Oxford, for example, suffer from a dead acoustic. The way to deal with that, in my opinion, is to play music that's smooth and sustained, with very few gaps between the notes something as delicate as the pipes on this organ, or as beautiful as the hills and valleys of England. <laughs> 